All right, EG1 for House of the Lord. Um, you start with a hook that comes in on the second intro. Um, you want to get yourself lots of gain, uh, bridge pickup, um, and you're going to be way up here on the neck playing around this uh, high A inversion. Um, oh, nope, sorry. For the intro, you're going to be right here down this A inversion right here. So what you're going to do for that is you're going to basically be striking um, the uh, B and G strings together. And uh, if you've got a Bigs B to add some, or like a trim bar or whatever to add some warble, that's good too. Uh, but without effects, you're kind of doing this. That's pretty much it there. And they kind of pre preemptively hit the A, the A root chord again before the verse happens, presumably, so it can kind of ring out over the verse. So the timing of that particular strike feels a little odd, but when you play it in context, it's okay. So that again is here. <laughs> And then you want to add some um, reverb uh, on the front, uh, something fairly long, and then you want to add a, uh, a uh, dotted eighth delay of some kind, of course. And then you get all the magic of that. And so you ring out through uh, the first half of the first verse, and then you kind of add these little a accents um, around this uh, A inversion right here. Uh, turn Middle pickup, gain down a level, um, turn on a chorus or something warbly if you've got it, and you can kind of get this little. You'll hit that one more time. And then you're into the chorus. Um, the chorus is uh, even higher in versions, the one I showed you before, uh, way up here on the neck. And um, uh, same same delay, uh, kind of just the dotted eighth, you know, fairly present thing. The only thing I change from this to the first hook is to uh, take some of the reverb down, like kind of out of the way at the beginning. It kind of helps for it to wash over those spaces. And here you really don't want it. Uh, you want you could probably turn your reverb off altogether, but like a little bit still sounds fine. Um, tons of gain still, and the dotted eighth delay is what really makes the part. Um, and the way that you strum it is the thing that makes the most difference. Um, and so to just play it to what it sounds like in the mix, you're up here. Let me take the stuff off for now. <laughs> So you're right around this, the shape I showed you first here, this, and you're kind of down here doing this. Uh, uh, only you're not going to strum it like that. You're more like to let the delay do some of the work, otherwise it'll be a pretty muddy mess. You really only want to do... To over exaggerate it, that's kind of what you want. Then the delay does the work. Um, you can kind of, if, if it's more comfortable to kind of mute in between, you can do that too. show you what I mean when the delay comes in if you just try and strum the whole thing it's okay but it's like a little bit messy if you just try and strum uh, the whole time I'll show you what happens
If you stay in time, it's okay, but if you just uh, don't strum it the whole time like we were just talking about. <laughs> You can kind of let the part uh, shine through more and the delay do part of the work for you, which is kind of the goal for a part like that. So that's how I would do that. Um, when you get to the bridge, um, same setting as the chorus and the same kind of idea, uh, starting with this muted thing right down here. Uh, where you're gonna start on the G string and you're kind of doing this. Same rule applies there. You really want to get the same pattern you had before. So, see what I mean? And then the delay can do the work again. to kind of mess around with it to get the cadence right and then eventually you just uh, for the back half of the bridge you just uh, change that to full out aggressive strums instead of the palm muting thing <laughs> And then there's a quick, uh, for like the kind of one, two bar turnaround thing at the end of the bridge, you kind of have this quick. <laughs> Then you're back into the chorus. And you can see what I mean about it being kind of hard to, to lock in the thing. So you really have to, you know, practice with kind of what works for you to be able to stay consistent with that part and lock in. Um, and then at the very end, um, You'll play chords with everybody else, um, which is, you know, you don't have to drop D, but you can, like, because you don't really touch the bottom strings at all till the very end of the song. And so if you want to kind of jump in with the uh, EG2 parts for the last bridge where you're dropped out. Um... Now we're royalty. You are royalty. The repeat bridge before that is just the same as the one before the kind of full out. Uh... Uh, and that should cover all the parts. Hopefully I didn't leave anything out. I don't think I did. Uh, let me know if I did. Okay, bye.